Hey Fluffle Buns, welcome back. This is Shiro Sagi, and this is part 15 of Kata no Shoujo. From what I hear, I'm about halfway through. I know, it's long. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Okay, now let's start. And that, yeah, we started up at the nurse's office. You haven't been forgetting to take your medicine, have you? Catching a little murmur. You should take it easy for a few days. It's because I've been running every day. The nurse's words hurt me far more than the exhaustion of the morning run ever could. Take it easy for a few days? I knew I should have kept quiet. I keep my eyes on the floor, feeling like a complete idiot. Of course I hadn't been remembering to take my medicine. <laughs> wow. I've been rushing out of my room to get to the track before Emmy. After the track meet a few days ago, I felt inspired by a kind of inspiration so I've been running warm-up laps in the morning before she even shows up but then today while she and I were running I felt a little pain in my chest it was only slight and it was only for a second so I mentioned it to the nurse honestly it wasn't that bad I mean I kept running and finished just fine so really it couldn't have been that bad why do I feel like I'm making excuses to the nurse Moreover, why do I need, feel a need to justify continuing to run despite the pain? Really, it comes down to my being unwilling to concern Emmy, who seemed concerned anyway. I'm not sure how she was able to tell there was anything wrong, but she claims I stumbled a little. She's the one who's insisted I tell the nurse, so now I feel bad for worrying her at all. The nurse is shaking his head ruefully while Emmy paces outside the room. Hey, Sal, I know it's difficult for you to get into a new routine, but if you don't want to find yourself in a lot of trouble, you're going to have to try harder. You can't afford to forget your pills, and you can't push yourself too hard. But if I don't push myself, how will I improve? I don't know where that came from. The nurse seems to have an idea. Now, where have I heard that before? You're hanging out with Emmy too much and talking just like her. He laughs and pats me on the shoulder. Huh, she's rubbing off on you, I guess. Hehe. <laughs> his expression changes again and he's back in serious mode. Look, I'm not saying you shouldn't push yourself. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be taking your medication, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't stop if your chest starts to bother you. I'd prefer not to have any fatalities while I'm on staff here. A bit of a lofty goal to be sure, but I'm always up for a challenge. Wait, people die at this school? I hate to admit it, but I think he's right. I've got to remember to take my medication. You're right. I'm sorry to worry you. Who's worried? You're a smart kid, right? I know you can be responsible, so... A situation like yours, you've got to learn to be responsible fast. I know, I know. His expression suddenly becomes devious. I suppose you've started to enjoy your runs with Emmy then, eh? Winky winky face. Yeah, they've really been helping me. I mean, until today I was feeling a lot more healthy. Plus, it's really impressive to see Emmy run. Did you see her at the track meet? She was incredible. The nurse nods, grinning all the while. That she was, he so. I watched her first couple of races before I had some business to take care of. But she told me all about it. Kind of you to loan her her jacket, by the way. Huh? Oh yeah, that wasn't that big of a deal. I'd honestly forgotten all about that. I still haven't gotten it back. The nurse gets a smile that makes me feel like he's just made a joke. Not to you, but Emmy certainly appreciated it. Oh, oh you. And I know she appreciates your running with her in the mornings. This one catches me off guard a little. Sure, she mentioned that it's easier to keep it scheduled with an extra person. I didn't think I was doing her a favor at all. I thought she was doing me the favor of helping me follow the doctor's orders. She tries harder when you're around. If there's someone else running with her, she's going to push herself more. And if she tries even harder when you're around because, well, it's you. What the heck does that mean? Dumbass, of course, it means she likes you. Ho oh, oh, ho, you'd love to know, wouldn't you? He laughs in the style of the evil megalomaniacs, like, <laughs> No, seriously, it's because you're her friend. If Rin ran with her, I'm sure she'd do the same. Yeah, I call bullshit now. 
Oh, probably. But that's not the point. The point is you're helping her, even if you don't know you are. And she's grateful for that, even if she never says it. What do you mean, even if she never says it? Emmy doesn't talk a lot, but she and I have known each other long enough that I can read her most of the time. I'll admit it, I have no idea what he's talking about. Emmy always seems pretty talkative to me. I see. The nurse suddenly realizes that he has been rambling and stops talking, looking a little embarrassed. Anyway, you don't have to stop in morning exercise. Just walk the track instead of running for a few days. Let things calm down. And take your damned medicine. I laugh as I exit the office, pumping straight into Emmy. Oopsie. Oops, sorry about that. Are you okay? What did the nurse say? You need to go to a hospital? Oh my gosh, it was my fault, wasn't it? I've been pushing you too hard, haven't I? Don't cry. I'm a horrible person. No. Don't do that. The words pour forth like a torrent. She's really agitated. I didn't expect her to be this concerned about me, to be honest. I gotta calm her down, but how the hell do we do that? I do the only thing I can think of. Oh no, what is it? I give her a hug. Oh, that's sweet. Emmy tenses up slightly, so I pat her head in what I hope is a reassuring manner. Hey, settle down. I'm fine, okay? No worries. I can feel Emmy's body relax as I continue to assure her that I'm fine. Her arms wrap around me as if she's trying to confirm that I'm not about to fall over dead. I catch a whiff of her hair. It smells like sweat or how adrenaline should smell. It's a scent of activity, but that doesn't smell good, does it? I don't know. And it the strawberries. <laughs> strawberries are good, from her shampoo, I suspect. I do like strawberry smells, too. They're nice. I just need to remember to take my medicine, that's all. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault. You're sure? Her voice is muffled, mostly because at the moment her face is pressed into my chest. Yeah, I'm sure. I just need to take it a little easy for the next few days. It suddenly occurs to me how close the two of us are. Oh, it's gonna happen. It also occurs to me how nice this being this close feels. I can feel Emmy's heartbeat calming down and I have to resist the urge to rest my chin on the top of her head. Do it anyway, it's cute. Thank goodness. You really had me worried there, Sal. Emmy, you're gonna come, gonna come in here anytime soon? Hi, nurse. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting? Shut up, nurse. <laughs> the two of us spring apart as if the other had just caught on fire. <laughs> wham, wham, wham. Emmy brushes her hair back nervously and laughs. Of course not. I'll, uh, see you later, okay? Oh, and he's Sal? Hmm? Take your damn medicine. The last phrase is punctuated by a punch to the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, I'll remember. You be I better remember. See you later. The nurse smiles again like he's in on some joke I don't know about and waves to me as I head to my room, feeling a burning in my cheeks. Are you blushing? You blushing? I need a shower. Oh, yes, you do. A cold one. <laughs> ah, as if the thoughts running through my head now are any indication. Oh, my God. She was really soft. Oh, God. We're thinking the naughty pervy thoughts this early in the morning, huh? My pills are waiting for me when I make it to my room. I swallow them without a second thought. I don't know why I didn't think of waiting until after the worms to take them. For some reason, I figured it was when I woke up, or not at all. But no, they only need to be taken every 24 hours. The exact time of day doesn't factor into it. My thoughts drift back to the hug in the hallway. It's weird you'd expect someone to smell foul after a run. But for some reason, Emmy smelled right. That tinge of sweat just seemed to fit her. I really need that shower. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, we got another part done? That was fast. Okay, now what happens? When do I get to see the other girls again? I guess never. Strange that it feels so natural for me to go up to the roof these days. I never would have done such a thing at my old school. In those days, I liked to eat alone. No, it's not quite true, though I like to sit alone. I also like to watch people. 
I always figured that was the sort of person I was, but it appears I was wrong. Then again, I also thought that I was the sort of person who had a normal heart. <laughs> so there you have it. I don't know myself that well. Now I'm on the roof so I can have lunch with a couple of people. And they're both girls, which is even stranger. Oddly enough, I feel closer to Emmy and Rin than I felt to anyone at my old school. Somehow I get the feeling they'd at least visit me if I wound up in the hospital. Maybe. <laughs> I focus on the view from the roof, banishing such thoughts from my head. There's a light breeze blowing, and the sun is shining high in the sky. The sky itself is a deep blue with hardly a cloud in it. Oh, I like that kind of sky. It's gotten pleasantly warm, and as I sit down to wait for my friends, I close my eyes and enjoy the feeling of the sun seeping into my skin. I'm gonna fall asleep up here. I would too, actually. This is nice weather. Seems like nice weather. Voices intrude upon the edge of hearing. Seems to have fallen asleep on us, Rin. Maybe he's faking to lull us into a false sense of security. Why would he do that? No idea. Still, you make a good point. We should kick him or something to make sure he's really asleep. Huh, what? <laughs> Don't kick me. Emmy looms over me like only a short girl can, peering at me intently. Oh, you're awake. I guess we don't have to kick you then. Was it part of your master plan? What are you talking about? And me shrugs with their twin tails bouncing with emotion. I'm not sure either. You must be pretty tired to fall asleep out here. Although it's pretty comfortable, I suppose. She plops down next to me and begins to eat. Rin sits opposite from the two of us, a move which only makes me more aware of the girl sitting next to me. If I didn't know any better, I'd swear Rin did it on purpose. I concentrate on my food, trying to tune out the majority of the conversation that Rin and Emmy are having. Despite my best efforts, however, I still find myself glancing over at Emmy whenever she speaks. I notice how she purses her lips when she's thinking about something, squinting slightly as if that would improve her thinking ability. Rin says something that makes Emmy laugh, and I notice, perhaps for the first time, how she laughs with her whole body rocking back and forth head thrown back, almost like she's about to fall over. I probably look like a creep. It's about this time that I realize Emmy's looking at me. Her voice raised slightly, so she's probably just asked me a question. Am I zoning out? Huh, sorry? I kind of zoned out for a moment there, but I did. Emmy rolls her eyes, while a slight quirk of the eyebrow is the only sign that Rin's even paying attention. I said, did you get a career survey in your class too? You know, one of those what do you want to do after high school things? I don't think so. Maybe we'll get one tomorrow. What are you going to put down? That's a really good question. I guess I always figured I'd go to college after high school, but I have no idea what I'd do once I got there. And with the heart attack and all, I'd really been concentrating on each day as it came, rather than making long-term plans. I suppose I can safely start planning ahead again. I've always liked having at least a vague plan for my future, so it'd be nice to come up with one again. Of course, that doesn't change the fact that right now I've got absolutely no clue. I always kind of assumed I'd figure it out in college. That or just become a salary man. That's pretty popular. But do I really want to? That's a tough question. Salary man in Japan is just like those office worker guys that you see walking around in their suits. They're called salary men. I guess I don't really want to do anything. You don't sound very excited about that one, do you? She laughs as she says this, then caught up in her laugh again. It's so girlish, high and giggly, like a, well, pardon the cliche, like a babbling brook. It bubbles out of her, starting in her belly and working its way up to her throat. I can't help but laugh myself, it's infectious. Yeah, I guess I'm pretty unhappy with the salary man idea. To be honest, I haven't given much thought to the future recently. I suppose that, these days, I've been more concerned with living one day at a time. Emmy considers this for a moment and grins. That's a pretty good idea, he sal. I just wrote down, pirate. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yo ho, fiddly dee, you are a pirate. <laughs> I'm momentarily stunned, but then I start laughing. I stop myself and manage to gasp out a question. You aren't 
No, you're not actually serious, are you? Ebony looks mock offended. Well, at least I've got the legs for it already, so I just kind of figured. Even Rin seems amused by this. Just you wait, I'll be the terror of the high seas. I'll show you all. I've even been working on my pirate voice. She suddenly springs up and begins swaggering up and down the rooftop, shouting orders. Yar, me hearties, give me broadside with the long guns. We'll wear their guts for garters. <laughs> Do you even know what that means? Rin's unexpected interruption stops her in her tracks. Not really. But it's all in the delivery. The ringing of the bell prevents her from demonstrating her point further. Emmy dashes off immediately, leaving Rin and myself alone on the roof. Ooh. Rin stares at me intently for a few more moments. Is there something wrong? Rin considers this question closely for a moment. After a lengthy pause, she shakes her head. Nope. Oh, um, why the staring then? Rin shakes her head again. Nope, I don't get it. Get what? The staring thing. You two seem to, but I don't. Great, she saw me staring. Now she probably thinks I'm a pervert or something. Actually, probably not. This is Rin we're talking about, after all. Still, I'd feel the need to defend myself. I wasn't staring, I was just tired. Rin actually snorts at this, but she doesn't say anything. No, really, I was just distracted is all. Hmm. Eager to end this conversation, I head back down to class. I'm greeted by the twin specters of Shiz and Aidenisha, looking like they mean business. Oh, crap. Well, Shiz and looks like she means business anyway. Misha just looks like she's about to start laughing at any minute. Up on the roof again, he chat. You know that's dangerous, don't you? That's right. The school cannot be held responsible for any injury that comes from being up there, you know? Furthermore, we can report you for breaking the rules. Misha leans in and whispers conspiratorially. But we won't, he chan You three are too cute together. She straightens up again, laughing at my sudden blush. <laughs> You're too easy to tease, he chan Hey, come on. I'm still new here, sort of. Isn't it mean to pick on the newcomer like this? Nope. It's to help you get acclimated to your new surroundings. Ah, I see. Well, do you have to be so overzealous about it? Yep. Ah, that aside, he chan we were looking for you this morning, but you weren't in your room. Of course I wasn't. I was out for my warning exercise. We're here in class, bright and early. Unlike you. She's and it looks paved in the beat later, so does Misha. She tries to at any late rate. That was because of student council business. You should be grateful that we worked so hard for you. Oh, I am. I am. So what did you need me for? Not another attempt to rope me in to do their dirty work, I hope. We had to give you something. Since you weren't around, we dropped it off in your room. Something? Like what? Oh, you'll find out when you get back, hey, chan <laughs> Oh, crap. What does she do? What did they put in my room? Muto, entering the room, ends our conversation, and we all head to our seats. It's only after I've settled down at my desk and the teacher started talking about something or other that something odd strikes me. What did Rin mean, you two seem to? Is Emmy staring at something, too? For a brief moment, I consider the possibility that Emmy was staring at me the way I was staring at her. Of course, that's ridiculous. Still, I can't deny that I wouldn't mind it if it were true. But it's best not to think of that. No need to get my hopes up. Come to think of it, when did I start having hopes like that anyway? I shake my head in an attempt to clear it and focus on the lesson. After class, I make my way to my room... Muto really piled on the homework today. Oh, hi. Before I can open my door, however, I'm suddenly inter intercepted by Kenji, who has just exploded out of his own room in a flurry of papers. Hey, we need to talk. These rooftop shenanigans of yours, man. They've got to stop. What? You're running around on the rooftop with those limbless wonders. 
They're women, man. Go get yourself killed running around like that. I don't follow. Kenji sighs and adjusts his glasses before what could be understood as an attempt at explaining himself patiently. Look, we're friends, so I'm telling you this for your own good. But if I were going to kill someone, I'd do it by throwing them off the roof and make it look like an accident. And if I thought of it, you can be sure they've thought of it too. They're crafty. Almost as crafty as I am. I see. Good. I'm glad we had this chat. Loan me 500 yen. Fuck you, man. Why do I keep giving you money? I'm sorry? I need to get a drink, man. I've been inside all day. The tap water's been compromised. As I'm sure you know. So I need to stock up on something canned. Got it? To do that, I need 500 yen. Don't your parents give you money? And since I've just saved your life with my timely advice, you can at least spare me 500 yen. You know, if they don't make him go away, 500 yen is a bargain. It's like five bucks. I hand the money over to Kenji who nods and thanks and dashes off out on the hallway, but not before he locks his door. What an exhausted person. I'd better go in case he changes his mind. Hmm? As I close the door, my heel taps against something lying on the floor. It's a brightly colored rectangle of paper. Ah, this must be the something Misha mentioned before. Probably a student council leaf that she slid under the door. However, when I pick it up, I find that I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone actually wrote me an old-fashioned, handwritten paper letter. It bothers doing something like this in this day and age, anyway. Yeah, and as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, this is definitely a letter I have in my hands. I was planning on finishing my homework, getting some dinner, and going to bed in order to be ready for tomorrow morning's run. However, this letter has naturally caught my interest. I sit at my desk to examine it properly. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamaku, so it feels special, even if it wasn't something as rare as a handwritten letter. What causes me even more trepidation is the name of the sender, written neatly on the back of the envelope. Iwanako. I have no idea why she would write to me. I haven't been in contact with anyone from my old school since I transferred. And Iwanaka was the last person I'd expect to want to write me a letter. Oh, that's the girl from the first episode that he, like, had a heart attack on. Oh, shit. The last time I saw Iwanaka was terribly awkward, embarrassingly so. She came to my hospital room, peeled me an apple out of courtesy, and then we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye and didn't look at me in the eye when she closed the door. It might have been a natural end to the series of visits that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visited me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her. But something stopped me every time. Every time that I didn't speak made the next time even harder. She looked so guilty that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her, and I never could figure out the right words to say. I think you and Ako brightened herself from my heart attack. That's ridiculous, of course, but knowing it and believing it are two very different things. I told her that it wasn't her fault. She nodded, and I really think she understood that if it hadn't been that, then sooner or later something else would have made my heart give out. That she looked so hopelessly sad every time she opened that door and entered my room. So I never managed to say the things I wanted to say. In the end, that might have hurt her even more. Oh, what does it say? Carefully, I opened the envelope and drew out the folded letter from within. Dear Hiso, how are you? I hope you are well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year. So we're pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood among the third year seems to be very anxious about the final exams. Even though they're so far away, the teachers are badgering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our homeward teacher this year. <laughs> Did you believe it? I was sure he'd retire after our second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. I think things like this are the main reason why the mood among third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I've always stood reasonably well in exams. It's so weird to think of that we are already seniors, isn't it? Time has really flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. 
I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person and I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think I've had quite enough of this. I crumple up the sheet of paper and toss it across the room. My aim is off, so the letter rolls into my nightstand instead of going into the wastebasket. You didn't finish reading it? That was an apology for abandoning me, except I don't know that I really need it anymore at this point. The hospital seems like a lifetime ago, and here now, I've got other things in my mind. I mean, for starters. It wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's not something I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital and it feels like forever until this letter came in. It's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for myself. I have no time for the past. Now, about that homework. Alright, I'm going to call this the end of part 15. This one might have been a little longer. It feels like I've been rambling on reading this for, like, ever. But, we're going to save. Save. Save, save, save. Go back to the main menu. As always, and this was part 15 of Katawa Shoujo. If you like this, always remember to hop into that like button and give it a little nudge. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next 